Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Julio, baby, it is cold outside. (laughs) On this week's show, we're talking about what to expect and what to do when the weather turns cold. If you have a pond or water garden, it's time to winterize your pond. We'll tell you all you need to do in our second segment. Is your lawn turning colors? Grass is green, weeds turn other colors, and zoysia turns brown, right, Julio? Yes, I do. Lawn renovation begins now, and we'll tell you what to do. Are you getting panicked about pruning? (laughs) Relax. Some of those trimmings may have an ornamental use if you wait just a couple of weeks. A shout-out to Karen in Belleville, Ontario. Karen asked, what should she leave or remove those leaves? Blowing into her perennial garden. It's all about timing. We'll explain in our final segment. So stay tuned. We'll be back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Before the weather gets too cold, now's the time to apply Fertilome's Winterizer for established lawns. Grass absorbs the greatest amount of nutrients later in the season, just prior to the winter months. This 25-5-6 analysis also contains five micronutrients, boron, copper, iron, manganese, and zinc. Fertilome's Winterizer for established lawns builds hardiness, stem strength, and disease resistance, ensuring a healthy, stable plant which can endure the hardships of winter better than weaker plants. Lawns fed in the fall are first to green up in the spring. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Furlum's Winterizer for established lawns and expect to have the best looking lawn in the neighborhood. Green Acres Nursery and Garden Center, West County Line Road, Colmar, Pennsylvania. Herbins Garden Center, Chestnut Street, Emmis, Pennsylvania. Laurel Oak Garden Center, Thompson Mill Road, Marlton, New Jersey. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers and Garden. Hello. Hello. Did winter arrive? (laughs) I think it did. It really (laughs) felt like it. We skipped right from autumn. We didn't even have one. It went right to summer to winter. You know, it was 34 degrees this morning. I know. Anyway, there are some things you need to do, right, Julio? Yeah, well, yes. And that is not, not to be over, overly worried, okay? Mm-hmm. Everything's fine. Mm-hmm. Unless you didn't get your splinkers rolling out, unless you didn't bring in your house plants, <laughs> yeah. unless. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> That's right. Sorry. Right, so, first thing uh-huh. on our list if you have sprinklers that need to get blown out every year and you haven't called your guy, He's going to say, okay, you're at the end of the list. Oh, boy. Now, first, let me just say that these first cold snaps are just that. They're just a quick cold snap, and generally, it's not an intense freeze where it's going to get your sprinkler system underground, but you need to get that done. 
Mm-hmm. Need to turn off your outdoor spigots, Julio? Do you have? Do you turn off your water from inside your house to no, the spigots I outside? No, and you know you're right because you know what happened to me? I yeah. got a crack, and, and I. I remember your remember water that? bill went water nuts. Bill nuts. Yeah, four hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lesson for you, everyone. Oh, if you want yeah. to uh, pay four hundred dollar water bills <laughs> yeah. because of a crack spigot, That's right. make sure that you're turning off that water from inside the house mm-hmm. and then opening up that spigot so that it drains. Also, your hoses. Like, I have one of those retractable hose reels. Right. I have to get the water out of all of that, all that. so that it doesn't freeze inside, and I ruin the hose and the hose reel. That's right. So you got to do all those <laughs> things. So think water, think water, think water. Mm-hmm. Another thing, you don't think you missed fertilizing because Hollytone, Espoma Hollytone, go get a bag of Espoma Hollytone from your local garden center. Tell them that we sent you and it's time to still time to do a fertilization of all of your plants, mm-hmm. not just your your evergreens, but also even though your perennials are going dormant, those roots are growing. Oh, yeah, you've got growing. you've got stuff going on under the ground, and that's what we're talking about. The active growing season for top growth is pretty much over, mm-hmm. but it's the roots are still growing. Oh yeah. So definitely holly tone on holly-tone. all of your evergreens tree and evergreens and shrubs again it has to be a spoma holly tone because that's all organic it releases slow it's not going to try to push the plant to grow but it's going to feed those roots Mm -hmm. we love that don't we yeah we do yeah oh boy all right favorite one of yours what's next (laughs) will stop stop. yeah we love will stop i always use it explain it please we call it chapstick (laughs) chapstick uh, for your plants that's it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it's, it has a barrier, of course, and uh, it prevents those cold winds from burning your uh, leaves. So what you do, it's a spray. It's a spray. And that you can get it as something that's ready to spray, like on a trigger trigger bottle, mm-hmm. or a concentrate that you mix up in your sprayer and you spray that way. Uh, so we say chapstick for your plant. What does that mean? So in the winter, it's drier. You your lips get cracked and you put on chapstick and this prevents that. Mm-hmm. Wilt stop is the same idea that it will encapsulate the moisture in the plant, especially on those evergreen leaved plants, and that it holds that in so that the the plant will overwinter without the winter burn. We talk all from now until probably May, we will be talking about winter burn. Winter burn is something that can really damage your broadleafed evergreens, azaleas, rhododendrons, and that if you don't put this on, boxwoods, mm-hmm. boxwoods. boxwoods we were yeah. t- you did you have boxwoods that got like turned mm-hmm. all white because of that got winter burn? So I know that we yeah, faced I that think it's this a little spring. Brownish, yeah. mm-hmm. We either got a call about somebody who said yeah. that, mm-hmm. and if they were using the wilt stop, it will prevent that. And that now is the time to do it. If you do it when it's too late, after the foliage has frozen, you can really screw up some plants. There are warnings on the label about cypress and junipers and cedars that if they haven't hardened off for the for the winter, uh, and the moisture retreats to the root system, the moisture in the plant cells could freeze and burst. So early freezes it could be a problem. So you want to get it done right. How about house plants? Yes, that's another thing. You know, we have to have those house plants. You know, when you bring them in, make sure that you know there's no insects involved here. Right, but also with that, you know, you could use wilt stop wilt on stop house on plants. Yes. But again, like Julio was saying, you want to use a dormant oil spray. It's called dormant oil spray, but even though your plants aren't dormant, it's a light paraffin oil that smothers the insects and the eggs. But you have to make sure that you spray the top of the leaves and the bottom. Oh, yeah. The bottom is where they, they usually hide. And if you're spraying the top, it's not gonna do anything. Yeah, and then, and again, it's not necessarily poison. It's it's technically an organic mm-hmm. and that it just smothers the, the insect rather than poisoning it. Great idea. Great idea, yeah. What about bulbs? Oh yeah, you better get those summer flying bulbs and dig them up. You know, it's like it's like a subway going one way and going uh-huh. the other. You uh-huh. got your spring flowering bulbs that you're putting in putting right in. now. They're going to go in the ground, uh-huh. but those summer and flowering bulbs they <laughs> got to come out of the ground. <laughs> you know, so they're, they're going to be passing, yeah. <laughs> passing by. <laughs> but things like dahlias, for yeah, instance, dahlias, they need to be they dug, dug up. up yeah. um, 
I dig up gladiolas. Cannas are like, depending on if you've got a hardy enough variety, but you, you, I would dig them up just to be on the safe side. They're easy. Um, it's time to do that. We talked with uh, William the, from from uh, Netherland Bulb Company about this a few weeks back. If you want to go on to the podcast, we had William on from Netherland Bulb about uh, bulbs the entire show. And that uh, that's available on any of your podcast providers that you can find that. But it's time to dig them up and get them stored uh, so that you can replant them in early spring. That's right. Have anything else to add, Julio? Yeah, it's just a little thing here, lad. You know, we talk about, you know, the root systems are still growing. And yep. I just want to let folks know that we have uh, on, a, on a Syngenta.com soil temperatures. That's right. We have a five-day average right now in my town of 52.8. So that's pretty warm. That still is warm, right? Because yeah. because keep in mind, we're going to talk about grass seed later in, in this, uh, this show. But... Mm-hmm. The ambient temperature may be 34 degrees, but underneath that you have that insulating layer of soil that's going to be staying warmer. So there are things growing, like we're going to say, and you'll listen, you'll hear that we'll talk about growing grass seed right now, where some people think, oh, no, it's too late. Nah, nah. I think the temperature is going up in in our area up to 70, right? At least, so yeah, we again, least. it's a cold snap. I, I think this is God's way of saying, "Hey, you know, hey. come on, you <laughs> moron, get out there! Yeah, get <laughs> we'll ready. give you one chance. That's it. Boy, we get a lot of those chances yeah. anyway. <laughs> so get out there and get things all buttoned up for there the winter now, so that you're not panicking later on. And yeah. call your sprinkler guy. He's gonna he's gonna not want to hear from you because everybody's calling him right now. Yeah. But at least get on the list. Yep, you don't want list. to deal with broken pipes. No. <laughs> you can pay them now to blow it out, or you yeah. can pay them to replace the line, and it's That's a right. lot cheaper to get it blown out. Oh, and I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609 609- 685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880, and we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other compost, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor organic potting soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less water and less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend organic potting soil is available at these local retailers. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's Greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. 
Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, for all those folks out there who have ponds or water gardens, now is the time to winterize. So let's go, Len. (laughs) Yeah, let's go. (laughs) All right. So first things first, if you have a ultraviolet sterilizer or clarifier or Mm -hmm. something that has a glass sleeve or a bulb that you run water through to make your pond less algae fixed or full or full of algae, (laughs) anyway, (laughs) you need to remove it from the water source. So you may have to turn your pond off. And it may be time to turn that pond off. It's uh, your fish are going to be okay. Just uh, cut down on everything. Their their whole just like we were talking about soil temperatures. The water temperature is going to get stay warmer. Let me see if I can get this out right. The ambient tension temperature of the air is warmer than or I'm um, colder than the actual water temperature. Now, all along, you should have been feeding them with a fall uh, food. If you, Again, this is if you have fish. And that you should slow down, maybe even stop, let them, you know, earn their keep by uh, eating some of that algae and, and muck on the bottom. You know, I have no problems making my fish do it. Uh, but the issue is if you've got that UV and it freezes, it's going to shatter. Oh, yeah. And then you're going to either have to replace it, and that's an expensive piece of equipment. Real expensive. So also, if you're enjoying the fall weather, you should consider putting a valve there so that you can remove it Stop the water, allow your waterfall to flow, and remove the UV, and make sure it's clean and ready to go for the spring when you go to hook it back up. But if you put a valve and a T and you move the water so that you can control it, you can still have your waterfall run. Now, it's going to need some plumbing, and you're going to have to you know, be smart about it. Because actually, a UV needs to go slower. It's more effective as the water passes through it slower than faster. So if you have the full force of your pump going through your UV, it's not necessarily going to be as effective if you slow that water down. So you might think about making an alternative source for that water so that it gets that algae killed. But that's another show. (laughs) So, again... Putting the getting rid of the UV and getting that out of there is going to save you a ton of money because if if it freezes in there, it's going to crack the quartz sleeve. It's going to ruin it, and you'll just have to replace the whole thing by the time you're done. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Microblift Autumn Prep, Julio. Yeah, let's see. Can't, let's test. Can't Julio. leave home without that one. What is it, Julio? What it is, it's um, they're enzymes that break down all the gook, you know, and, and organic matter that's in your pond. Yeah. Yeah, and that we often say a pond is a septic tank. It is. <laughs> you know, it's like basically <laughs> yeah. the things that rot in your pond, yeah. like leaves blow in, the right. fish poop. There's extra, oh, you know, the extra food that goes yeah. to the bottom. And the birds oh, and all that. Yeah, it needs to decompose, and that this yeah. will, I guess, it's like like Ridex. Red, Red X for your pond, <laughs> I you guess. Uh, uh, maybe we shouldn't use brand names. But uh, in any case, it does kind of the same idea where it will go and it will will break down the sludge and keep your pond cleaner for the following year. Uh, great idea. Don't don't leave home without it. You know, make sure make sure that you do use that. Next thing, you need an aerator or a pond heater to keep an exhaust hole in your pond. What are we talking about? 
when your pond freezes over and you don't have a place for those gases to escape. Now, we just talked about how the, the microbes will break down the sludge and it will create a gas that will go and kill your fish if they don't have access to that oxygen exchange or air exchange. If they have a sheet of, of ice over top that it is, for, it is going to kill your fish, you need an exhaust hole in that ice in order to allow those gases to escape so that everything is safe for your fish. Now, it is essential to do. Now, we have two methods of doing it. A pond heater works. It's a thermostat controlled thing where it gets cold enough, the heater clicks on and that it's not gonna make it like a hot tub. <laughs> it just leaves a hole in the ice. Like a, a lot of folks come in, it's like, oh, my pond, it's all frozen up. No, it's not. There's just like a disc and it's where that disc is, it, it leaves a hole. So think of it as a little chimney that allows all that gas to escape. An aerator does the same thing. Now, Becky likes an aerator. She does? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't either. I don't know. I, I don't know. Becky, I love you. You're from Florida. <laughs> um, but but she knows ponds, and she knows ponds better than I do. I admit. All right? Do you feel better, Becky? <laughs> anyway, but the issue is, is that I don't like the fact that you have the aerator, you have the air stone at the bottom where the coldest water is, and it's churning that water. Mm. Or, or actually, I take that back, where the warm, warmer water is at the bottom, not at the top, and that that aerator is churning that water. Now, she is convinced that that does not happen. In a larger pond, it's not. But if you have a tiny pond, mm, it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. So yeah, does that matter? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. It, but when you have a pond heater that stirring up of the water doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So the pond heater just floats on the surface. You got to make sure that you keep it away from your liner because it, you know, I've heard stories. I've never heard, had a customer come and tell me it happened, but where it can melt the liner, melt Ooh, you know, okay. but I don't know. If that, I, don't know. I, I mean, it's, it's something that rare. I would do just because it's smart. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. The last thing, mm -hmm. after you get all that done, and you're saying, why do I have a pond? <laughs> you need to put a net over top of it. When you prevent the leaves from falling in and blowing in, then you're preventing that sludge from building in the bottom. You're preventing algae from growing. You're preventing all those things that you that drive you nuts in the in the spring and the summer. You have ammonia's cut down because you don't have the decomposing organic matter in your pond so then you don't have ammonia issues so if you put a cover on it with again it's a net specifically made for ponds and that you're going to cover over your pond and it's going to prevent catch all of those leaves that are falling off of trees now and collect them in there one bit of advice mm -hmm. just pull the thing off in the spring and throw it out <laughs> it's 20 bucks but if you're trying to save it for the following year when you're trying to tug it and pull it and get it off of your pond and you're going to rip it there's leaves going to get caught into it and you're you'll thank me yes don't try to clean it off i mean it's hard if if you have a, a great net somehow magically that it that it is all cleaned off and no rips go ahead reuse it but i'm telling you right now I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> so, uh, so just, just uh, you, 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 you have my permission to, to be wasteful and throw it out because you're really not. Because time is money. That's right. Time is money and frustration. Ugh, oh. Nobody needs any more stress yeah. in their lives. Yeah, we want it easier for you to, to take care of. Right. Well, you got anything to add with, uh, with ponds? No, I just love what you said about, you know, if you do it now, it's going to make it easier for you in the spring. I mean, how, right. how, that, that's the key. That's right. You know. That's right. I mean, everybody out there, good gardeners know that your autumn prep is important for your spring results, right. especially in lawns. That's coming up. Oh, yes, it is. That's going to be our next segment. We'll be right back right after this. 
Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Before the weather gets too cold, now's the time to apply Fertilum's winterizer for established lawns. Grass absorbs the greatest amount of nutrients later in the season, just prior to the winter months. This 25 5, 6, Analysis also contains five micronutrients, boron, copper, iron, manganese, and zinc. Furlum's winterizer for established lawns builds hardiness, stem strength, and disease resistance, ensuring a healthy, stable plant which can endure the hardships of winter better than weaker plants. Lawns fed in the fall are first to green up in the spring. So, the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Furlum's Winterizer for established lawns and expect to have the best-looking lawn in the neighborhood. Neighbors Garden Center, Main Street, Hellertown, PA. Rhodes Garden, Delcab Pike, North Wales, Pennsylvania. Rourke Farm Supply, Elmer, New Jersey. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomer's in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Julio, is your lawn turning colors? <laughs> you, you better believe it is. Yeah. Most uh, of those colors are yeah. weeds going dormant. It looks like a weed. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's let's talk about your lawn. You have zoysia. Yeah, we do. always yeah. tease you about your zoysia lawn. Yeah. And has it made its trek from green to brown? It has already. It has already. Yep. Wow. It's there already. Wow. Yeah. Those of you that have green grass, congratulations. You have a lawn. Julio... As zoysia, which, anyway. All right, so if you're in your lawn, you've got patches of colors happening. Like, for instance, I'm sorry to admit, but I do have some browning weeds in my lawn. They have little, it looks, it looked like, you know, nice grass, a uh-huh. little bit. Right. On the chartreuse side of green. <laughs> you like that? Huh? No, I don't like that. But it's kalinga, uh, and kalinga is a sedge, uh-huh. and it's got this little tri uh-huh. thing down the top of the it. Top. It's yeah, it's it's yeah. it's not, It's going dormant. There you go. It's a weed. Most mm-hmm. of the the weeds are going to be changing colors now. A um, few weeks back, we talked to Dr. Jim about his neighbor that's got zoysia, and it's that's just right. made its trek over to his lawn, uh-huh. and that you're going to find those things happening. If you've got something turning like a purple or red, you, you more than likely have crabgrass. So that's crabgrass that you've been cutting all season. <laughs> <laughs> it may lay pretty low, that's right. but uh, 
Think about this. The whole point of this segment is that there are things that you can do now and remember to do in spring that will help you to have a better lawn all next year. So all those colors that you see, are they're dropping seed and they're dropping weed seeds, especially that crabgrass. It's dropping weed seeds now and that those seeds are going to germinate in the spring unless you use a crabgrass pre-emergent. Okay. Don't bother spraying for crabgrass now. We get customers all the time that are coming in and say, oh, I've got crabgrass. It's because it's the first time they notice it because it's dying. And they want to spray it now. And I, how much I would love to make a sale, it just is the wrong thing to do. That crabgrass is dead. And, I, I mean, we stopped selling crabgrass, you know, controls that are a post-emergent. Cool. Julio, I'm, I'm going in the weeds again. Weeds. <laughs> get it? That's a joke. <laughs> Explain pre-emergent weed control and post-emergent weed control. Yeah, pre-emergent means before, okay? So you're gonna get get uh, uh, <coughs> coverage before it comes up. Right. And post-emergent means afterwards. You're gonna get the same kind of treatment. After it comes up, you're gonna have to kill it after it's growing, and the pre-emergent is the preventer, which you stop before it emerges. Anyway, we got that cleared up point is is that the crabgrass control is easier to take care of pre-emergent so before it comes up and we always tell you not how many applications Julia one two two pre-emergent applications about I guess that's about six weeks apart um, you're gonna want to do one early and that so that because again we talked about how crabgrass can lay in the soil and not germinate all at once that all of a sudden you find you're getting crabgrass in late in the season, but you say, I put down a crabgrass control. It doesn't work. Well, you know, it, what happens is it stops working. It has, it's almost a time limit where it's, it's actually effective. So if you're putting down a second application, you're controlling all of that late spring germinating crabgrass. Now, absolutely important. The other thing is that there are overwintering weeds, broadleafed weeds in your lawn like dandelions and plantain those are gonna they're gonna come back they're not leaving and that you'll go and spray them now but you have to use a specialized product bonide okay bonide weed beater ultra is the weed control that is a weed control that you can put on your lawn at any time and it will not kill your grass but it will control weeds when the temperatures are 45 degrees and higher. Now we were just talking about how we're gonna have 70 degrees next week. Yeah. Right now we're in that 50 degree stage, but it's gonna control those weeds. And my suggestion is, is to use it as a spot control where you're just hitting it, and hitting each weed, rather than going and trying to do, don't do the whole lawn. Don't do the whole lawn. Just go ahead and walk through, get to know your lawn, walk through with your with your uh, your sneakers on and just spray, you know, have target practice on those weeds. <laughs> <laughs> and just use just use a small pump sprayer or just use that uh, 32 ounce trigger sprayer and just get Easy. each one rather than an entire mass weed control. It's just better. So you're putting stuff down. You've got some space. You can still get down grass seed. Now, fescue and ryegrass will germinate when soil temperatures are 50 degrees and will come up. It takes about two weeks for ryegrass, for, I'm sorry, for fescue. Wow, it's quick. Right. Ryegrass, a week. Wow. So it's germinating coming up. Yeah, it's quick. Bluegrass, not so much. Mm -hmm takes a month. I would avoid any large quantities of bluegrass in your mix. You know, like our, our mix is mostly fescue and rye. I think it has 5% blue. I'd go ahead and put that down and not worry. Because if anything doesn't germinate now, it's going to germinate in the spring. But if you put down a crabgrass control, you're going to stop it from coming up. So just keep that in mind, everybody. But I would do those large bare spots and that if you're overseeding where that dead crabgrass is going to be, 
your crabgrass preventer will distinguish between the grass seed and as far as now, because your grass seed's gonna germinate, it'll still prevent that crabgrass from coming up. So you're planting the seed now, your grass seed is gonna grow, your crabgrass seed is gonna be in there, but that doesn't grow, grow until spring. So that's what you're gonna prevent. So make sure that you're putting that seed down now, and that way you still have 50 degree soil temperature, because Julio, you said you did a test in, right. in your area, and your soil temperature was what? 52.5. 52.5, that's Sagenta.com. Sagenta.com. Soil temperatures. Soil temperatures. Yeah. So so you will you can put in your zip code, and it'll tell you what the temperature of your area is. And again, 50 degrees or higher for grass seed to germinate. And we were talking about using fescue and, and rye and, and perennial rye grass. And then you'll have good germination before winter sets in. What a great start, huh? Yeah. Ah. All right. Beautiful. Got anything to add? No. We're All ready. right. Get out there in that lawn. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Get your clean. shoes on. Walk around. Take yes. some time. Do some target practice on those broadleaf <laughs> <you> weeds. <laughs> we'll be right back in the garden right after this. Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Holly Tone is a perfect blend of natural, long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Now, if you haven't pruned or sheared your shrubs yet, we're not going to say anything, right? We're not <laughs> no, going to we're gonna, we're we'll get on break. you. Yeah, we're going to give you a little break. All right. In fact, we'll give you a couple of weeks to wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have, I have a funny uh, story, okay? Right. You know, last week we talked about how my mom passed away. And, right. and thank you for everybody that uh, gave us your condolences. It's very much appreciated. Um, so, <laughs> All right. 
our family has an interesting sense of humor. But uh, anyway, <laughs> that uh, so we're sitting, you know, and my si- siblings and I, there, there's three others, and we're sitting there, and we're looking at the headstone of the family plot, and, you know, the funeral's going on, and I'm, I'm talking to my nephew, and that he runs Richfield Farms in Clifton, and that the headstone is almost covered by dwarf blue spruce that have overgrown <laughs> and that and that was said no don't cut them don't cut <laughs> don't you dare cut them you know meme that, that's what we called my mom by, by her grandchildren that they're called her meme uh-huh. but you know that she would not want you to cut those blue spruce oh because you need to use them for christmas greens oh, don't oh, cut no. them now no cut them now you need to get those greens and if you do you will be haunted oh my gosh <laughs> anyway so we're all laughing about how bad the the stone looks but oh, understand that we're not going to cut it because we're going to use the greens at christmas time oh my gosh so those of you who get a wreath or blue spruce with bruce spruce in it you may be getting it from our family uh, grave site. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so oh, anyway, God. that is what basically we're giving you off for. Uh-huh. Christmas is coming. Yeah, it is. You know, you can wait. I mean, I can't believe it's November. Oh, no. It's November. It's November. All, we're almost through the first week At of least. November. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, wow. If you oh, wait boy. just a couple of weeks, right. it's That's not it. going to really matter all that much about cutting some of those greens. Like boxwood may become a little tinged brown and and maybe some varieties of juniper. But my gosh, blueberry juniper. (laughs) Beautiful stuff. Magnolia. Oh, yes. All that, all like you have uh, winterberry in your backyard, right, Hull? No, I cut it down. What's wrong with you? Why don't you cut it down? (laughs) Huh? I cut it down last year. Like out? You dug it out? Yeah. Why? Because I'm going to redo the whole back. All right. All right. So those of you that do <laughs> have winter berry holly <laughs> oh, or beauty berry, that again, that that's something to leave out there for a while. You don't want to yeah. wait till you get a really hard frost. Like we get weather in the 20s, that, mm-hmm. that may hurt the berries. But use that for your Christmas decorations. Green and blue holly, like those berries will hold on. But the it's the ones on the deciduous hollies that have a tendency to, to drop their uh, berries. But all of those different type of holiday greens that you haven't sheared those shrubs yet, wait. Wait until you're going to use that and bring it in the house. And you probably get a good, I don't know, three weeks out of it maybe. Unless you use Wilt Stop. There you go, Julio. So if you, you can use Wilt Stop that we mentioned earlier in the program, which will do the same thing. It'll encapsulate the needles and the leaves and it'll make those preserved like we dip our wreaths in wilt stop before we decorate them for christmas just simply because we want them to last a long time so take a few weeks off from trimming get your lawn in order get your pond in order get all of those the hoses wound up and take care of that and then when you go and you prune use those greens for decorations throughout the house for christmas good idea Beautiful idea. There we go. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants 
that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Sickles Market, Little River, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len, he's Julio. But Karen, a listener from Ontario, Canada, she's an international listener, huh? Pretty yeah. impressive. I felt great that she, that somebody from uh, up north contacted us. Yes. She texted us actually on the Bloomers in the Garden mm-hmm. hotline, which you can do. She asked a great question. Here's what she texted us. Hi guys, I am Karen from Belleville, Ontario. I love listening to your show. It's nice to learn so much and to be very entertained at the same time. I like your advice about what to do this time of year with the leaves that accumulated on one of my shrubs and perennial beds from a very large nearby maple tree. Should I clean them out now or leave them for the winter? Thanks for your help. Mmm. Wow. Okay. Go either way on this one, right? Hold yeah, I think so. But now you talked with Karen, right? Yes, I did. And what did you? I'm curious. Like, how does she listen to? Oh, us? Oh yeah, it's, you know, it's wonderful. I talked to her. She's she's very lovely, and loves our show. Like she says, she's That's great. been gardening for seven Thank you. years, and uh, she she said um, that, you know, she loves our show because we're entertaining and we give so much information. She loves information, Len. She loves that we're getting right. it all out. And she's really grasped it really quickly. Right. Now, um, she did say to me that, you know, she has this uh, garden and uh, all the, the leaves from the maple uh, come, come on there. Uh, they drop on there. And I said to her, you know, you can leave it, either leave it or not. It just depends on what you want to do. But, you know, what I do is I, I have uh, I have like a, um, <coughs> no, I blow her and it takes in the leaves and it and it uh, breaks them down. Oh, like a mulcher? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I all right, I've you, seen them. So yeah. like a little... Yeah, a little vacuum. Larger. A little vacuum, yeah. It's pretty cool. You got all the cool gadgets. <laughs> yeah, Did you right. read my shirt today? Yeah, I love Is that, that a Unitax, sir? Yeah, it is. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, in the other camp. Okay. Where it's, it's, you say leave them, I I or I I guess I agree with that. You're mulching uh, them though. Mulching it, yeah. You're not turning it in. You're just putting it on top. Yeah, I'm putting it on top. Okay, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because you could rake them up. You could, if, yeah. And then put down a a real mulch, like a bark mulch, mm-hmm. or, or even yeah, you could, like a soil amendment, like a bumper crop would bumper work. Crop, yep. Yeah, I gave her that option too. Yeah. Because yep. horticulturally, mulching and having them stay for the winter is probably better because it's going to keep the moisture in the soil. And that's what you really want. Uh, no matter what method you use, you want to make sure that you're doing something that will keep the moisture around those roots in case we get a particularly dry winter or a winter where, you know, the winds are real bad. And that's another another issue. You've got to make sure that you know where those perennials are. And I suggest marking those perennials with, you know, those little flags, those irrigation yeah. flags uh-huh. that you shove in the ground to right. know where your sprinkler heads are. Right. Or, I, they're they're cheap. You can get cheap. probably a you know a thing of a hundred. I don't know how much they are, but or maybe even fifty. 
and just have them around so that you can mark those perennials where they are so that if they start growing in the spring, you're not thinking they're weeds. You know, (laughs) another marriage counselor situation for those of us in the garden center industry where husband and wives argue about who killed the perennials uh, (laughs) because they pulled them out because they thought they were weeds. (laughs) If they are marked, okay, then you don't have that issue. Mm -hmm. I would make sure that you're pulling those leaves off early enough in the spring because if you have a maple leaf, it is going to basically change the direction on how that plant, like if a maple leaf is on top of the growing sprout, it's going to have it make a a veer to the right or veer to the left and it's not going to be a straight stem. Now, Julio has that fancy schmancy gadget where it (laughs) mulches. You wouldn't have that issue. If you mulch, you wouldn't have that issue. But if you leave the leaves there, you may. So just make sure you're getting the leaves out early. So we're talking March, Mm -hmm. making sure they're they're out. I mean, some of those perennials that uh, might be up, I mean, like think about your herbivores, right? So, yeah. so hellebores that they're yeah, they're hellebores will be January. up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they'll be up in January. Is right. Yeah. Uh, Ontario maybe a little bit later. Yeah, later. But still, same issue. Um, mm-hmm. As long as you know where your perennials are, then I think you're okay. Yeah. Um, that's the only thing I I find a problem with. What yeah. do you? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I don't think you know she has a huge problem with that. You no. Know? Yeah. No. So. If you've got the time, do it, but you're going to have to mulch with something. Right. If you leave them, you just need to make sure that you're getting mm-hmm. the leaves out early enough so that you're also not taking your rake mm-hmm. and destroying your perennials by hip raking too hard. Um, other thing is, is like absolutely feed right now with a spoma plant tone. Some people may say it's early, but you're using a spoma plant tone. A spoma plant tone is 100% organic. Slow release, right? Re- right. Release is slow. Mm-hmm. And that it's not going to force a lot of growth, and it's going to help the root system, and it's going to be a beautiful plant next year. Beautiful. 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 So leave them, but make sure you get them up before they start, your perennials start growing. Mm -hmm. And mark your perennials. And as I, I say that, I think it's like sometimes perennials seem to move underground, but that a lot of times is the seed is germinating, that it... The flowers dropped, so you know you find that you you mark your perennial, and then all of a sudden it's grown two you know two doors down. <laughs> it's actually just seed issue. But all in all, I I, I think it, it's a good question. Yeah, it is a good question. Yeah, you can do it, but you have to have the timing and the discipline to make sure that the leaves come up early enough in the spring, and then then you'll be okay. Like, I'm, I'm just thinking peonies. you got to put peony cages over your peonies right. early in the spring. So you've got work out there to do. A little, a little work. Yeah. I think, I, think she, I think she's good. Yeah. She's and, you know, good. how did she hear, how did she listen to us oh, again? Yes. Was you it know, a podcast? No, it was uh, YouTube. So she's catching yeah. us on YouTube. There you go, guys. So, so those of you who didn't know that we yeah. are, we do do a show on YouTube. YouTube yeah. Shout out to Mitch. Mitch, Mitch is smiling. You. He's <laughs> waving. With his half a finger that he cut off making his bagel this morning. <laughs> so, but that uh, that's something you can hear us on YouTube and you can hear us on any podcast yeah. provider, as well as the radio stations that you guys are listening to us on now. Anything to add about uh, Karen? Uh, I just want to thank Karen for her wonderful talk with me. That's that's the beauty of me talking to people. Oh, yeah. You know, I get to le- well, I get to learn who they are. I know. I know. Yeah. Well, you're the best. You are the best. All right. We're going to be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. 
Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Bloomer's in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. Bloomer's is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomer's has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomer's, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Me and Julio. Oh, boy. You know the thing that I've learned on this show? What's that? Is that the, as far as listeners in mm-hmm. out there, I mean, we know that we have podcast people that are international, that we, like... There's somebody in Belgium that they download uh-huh. our show immediately when it's available. Right. And Belgium and Germany and Holland and England uh-huh. and all throughout oh, yeah. Europe. We're on every continent. Yeah. If you're out there and you're from a different country, we want to hear from you. Yeah, we so do. you can call the hotline. Mm-hmm. You can text the hotline. I want to know how you listen to us. And if it's on YouTube or if it's a podcast, we'd love to hear from you. That's right. Hey, I want to take a shout out to David who came to Bloomers in the Garden. David! David came to Bloomers Home and Garden Center. We want to thank you, David, for coming and visiting us. We appreciate that. Yes. So the next time you visit your favorite garden center, greenhouse or nursery, tell them you listen to Bloomers in the Garden. Thank you, extraordinaire producer Brett Kronberger. We're going to see you next week. We'll see you in the garden. We'll see you in the garden.